I want to talk about why a lot that goes on in the world of integral philosophy is just full of shit, you know. And I'm the guy when I got into spiral dynamics and integral philosophy, not just that I tell everyone about it, you know, I made the uh, initial 35-minute video teaching everyone spiral dynamics. I also have a 40-minute video critiquing the blue meme, and I have a 90-minute video critiquing the orange meme. But some, for some reason, in the world of integral philosophy, no one wants to critique the orange meme. They bow down to it. And sorry, if you're not familiar with spiral dynamics, or you're not familiar with Ken Wilber, if you're not familiar with integral philosophy, this video probably is not going to make a lot of sense to you. But for those of you who are familiar with these, why is it that integral philosophy is obsessed with sucking up to the orange meme and do just everything is orange. You know what, if everything is orange, then that means you're basically operating on the orange meme level. Did you ever figure that out? You know, and there's, there's this Ken Wilber meetup group in Manhattan. You know, I had to stop going there years ago because it's like um, they're congratulating themselves on how integral they are. And you go there and there's a bunch of like orange meme people jerking off to how integral and high and mighty they are. Oh, I'm into, you know, non aggressive um, communication and all this shit, and, and but the values are orange, and you're operating on orange. So with integral philosophy, send me this conscious capitalism stuff. It's orange. Get that? Conscious capitalism is orange meme. It's not integral. It's not yellow or turquoise. It certainly isn't green. It's orange. You want to know why it's orange? Because it's capitalism. It's like we have these people, they're so intellectual with all their bullshit, you know, but they're not looking at reality. I don't know what I could say to get it into these people's minds that capitalism is orange. And let's, I want to go over the tenets of conscious capitalism to talk about how fucking stupid it is and how it's not integral, it's not revolutionary, it's not going to change the world. The only thing conscious capitalism is is a is an intellectual masturbation device for a bunch of orange green jerk offs to pretend that they're so integral. That's all it's good for. So when we go over to Conscious Capitalism website at the overview, they have this thing on um, the Conscious Capitalist Credo. And it starts out by saying, we believe that business is good because it creates value. You know, and so right away, it's like you're talking about some redneck, right-wing, conservative, VCs garbage. Capitalism does not create value. Do you know what creates value? Human labor creates value. Okay, um... You know, at least, well, that's from a Marxist definition, but how do you define value? Because we have a lot of people doing a lot of you know, pointless bullshit for no reason except that they need to earn a living. You know, you have, people in integral philosophy, you have to get it through your heads that right now we have enough technology and resources to take care of everyone on this planet and have them live in abundance with minimal labor. And the only reason why people are struggling to work for a living and earn a living is because this capitalistic system demands that people go work for 40 plus hours a week. There is no reason in the physical world for people to spend all this labor on bullshit. Most jobs that people have are bullshit. And if you want to defend capitalism, you have to defend why, with physical reference, people need to have all these stupid jobs. Like, look at, like, for example, mental health. Why do we need all these therapists and psychiatrists? Because people are under stress. Why are they under stress? Because they need to earn a living. Or because they are, were beaten by a child because they grew up in poverty. But the, my point, I can go on and on, but the reason why I have such poor mental health, for example, is because of the stress is the structural violence that calms down from capitalism. Why do we have a police force because people commit crimes. What's the point of having I mean, the police force, well, why do people commit crimes? It's because they are they want money. Why do they want money? Because they're, li they're living in scarcity. Why are they living in scarcity? Because of this capitalistic system. We can, we can go down the road. Look at all the people in healthcare and all the diseases. Why are they sick? Because they're eating garbage, because they are convinced to buy junk food. Why are they eating junk food? Because it's cheap to produce. But also food manufacturers need to convince people to buy more food than they should really eat because the problem with food is you can't, it's hard to get people to consume more because it's kind of a fit amount of food that people should eat. But I mean, I could go on from one sector to the other as how it's all bullshit. Like, why do we have these cars that break down? Why don't they just build one good car that doesn't break down, that doesn't burn gasoline? Why? Because it's a lot more profitable to have the system that we have. You know, so, so you have to start off by really looking at the physical world. 
does the economic system that we have make sense when you reference the physical world in terms of resources and technology? What is it that, what would it take to get these people into growth philosophy, the brains to realize that as technology and resources change, so does the validity of your economic system? Because all these people understand, hey, there are prehistoric times where people had one set of technology, they had a set of belief systems, and as that technology changed from that from prehistoric times to the Stone Age, the Iron Age, to the Middle Ages, and all that stuff, you realize that as technology changes, the validity of the economic system changed. But now all of a sudden, that's supposed to stop at capitalism. Oh, they hit the zenith of capitalism, and oh, you cannot go past the orange meme. That, that's the whole idea behind these people into philosophies, that you cannot go past the orange meme. <laughs> so they come and go with this bullshit where they want to use the economic system basically created by the orange meme that induces everyone to behave and think in terms of orange meme values and somehow we're going to elevate this you know it, it's just stupid so let's go on with, with this whole thing capitalism does not create value that that doesn't mean anything then you say it is ethical because it is based on voluntary change so it can't ConsciousCapitalism.org says that capitalism is ethical because it's based on voluntary exchange. It's like the stupid libertarian propaganda. You need to justify this system with how, why it makes sense given current resources and technology. And it's not voluntary. No one asked me to volunteer if I want to participate in capitalism. No one, you know, yeah, within this narrow frame of reference, our exchanges in the system are voluntary, but that does not justify creating this entire system. It's, uh, um, I, I don't even know how to explain it if someone is so blind that they cannot see it. We are coerced to sell our labor in the market for money, and we are coerced to exchange that money for goods under capitalism. And that coercion is not voluntary. We are forced to do it. And what's really damning is that given the current state of technology and resources available, it's stupid because we do not need this game to induce people to um, put forth all this labor. So you justify the game. Don't give me this reductionistic bullshit. You know, you're supposed to be so well, integral. You're supposed to be able to think of the systems. Okay, okay, I look at the reality. You, you're not doing that. That's why you're not integral. You're just orange mean jerk-offs over here. Then you write, it is noble because it can elevate our existence and it is heroic because it lifts people out of po poverty and creates prosperity. Capitalism is the number one cause of death on this planet. How many people are living in abject poverty in the, on our planet? How many people don't have enough food to eat? Even though we have more than enough food to feed, clothe, and house everyone, give them advanced technology, and have everyone live in abundance. We have that right now, but we're not living that way because the capitalistic system is oppressing people. So, um, in order to say that capitalism lifts people out of poverty, um, compared to, uh, you know, compared, is that really true? Are we really making the most efficient use of our resources given uh, the technology we have? You, no, no, we're not. So w where does this come from? It's your belief. You just theorized it out of thin air. You know, and part of this comes from this notion that because standard of living increased from the 1800s to the current day, that's because of capitalism, without looking at these other things. First of all, what we came up with was the scientific revolution and burning, you know, things like these so-called fossil fuels for energy. And capitalism allowed people, uh, you know, kind of rode the wave of that. You know, but it was the advance of science. It wasn't you know, capitalism. Hey, how you have to demonstrate that somehow. You can't just have capitalism come around and take credit, you know, for everything. Also, this is really true for first world nations. You're kind of like ignoring all the imperialism that happened during this time. Like, what about the people who are oppressed? Don't they count? 
you know, what about the wars? What about the bad stuff that's caused by capitalism? You can't just take the good things and say, well, this is capitalism and just ignore the bad and say, you know, so you, you, in this integral, like uh, conscious capitalism world, they have this idea that we define capitalism by the good things. And what we'll do is we'll eliminate the bad stuff by moving capitalism over to the integral level. Uh, um, you know, I'm going to get to some things about that you're not going to change with capitalism. Let's kind of go through this. You write, free enterprise capitalism is the most powerful system for social cooperation and human progress ever conceived. I, it's the, you're just making these statements on this conscious capitalism website. They're just kind of out of thin air. It's like, ah, uh, how do you, do you say the whole system of capitalism is predicated on this notion that everyone competing against each other for their own differential advantage is going to magically create a utopia? And you just like basically restate that. That's the most, what was that again? It's the most powerful system for social cooperation. Capitalism is not about social cooperation. You know, that's what your kind of statement is that we create a system where everyone has to compete and fight against each other for money. And, and this is just going to magically create social cooperation. I mean, why don't, maybe you should, as a starting point, think about what, think about how would you build a system that really encourages social cooperation? Because it's it's not this. I mean, you just believe in the magic of capitalism. How how's capitalism going to um create this? Was a wizard going to do it for capitalism? How is this going to really work out? And I know this isn't a good video. This is me ranting at these integral people. And if someone is watching, you know, I I want to really want raise these questions. You then you write. It is one of the most compelling ideas we humans have ever had. But we can inspire to even more, and. You, then just comes this, I, I, I just keep on saying bullshit. I, I don't even know what you're trying to do here except rewrap, reword um, Ron Paul libertarianism as if it's good for the earth or something. I, 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 that doesn't make sense to me, but that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to do something that makes no sense. You continue, conscious capitalism is a way of thinking about capitalism and business that better reflects where we are in the human journey, the state of our world today, and the innate potential of business to make a positive impact on the world. You know, it, it's... Business is based upon competition and differential advantage. And we're, we're kind of stuck at this point where you take this competitive system that causes people to not work cooperatively with, with each other, unless they're all like forced to in the same corporation. You're talking about a system that uses an infinite growth model on a finite planet with finite resources. And you're just making these things about how it's going to positively impact the world. Yes, in some ways capitalism can positively impact the world. But you can't just abstract away all the negative aspects and say, oh, screw that. Who cares about the negative parts of capitalism? Oh, wage, slave, labor, um, paying people no money, you know, like wage slavery, people killing themselves in China because of these factory conditions. That's the pure capitalistic system. You know, no safeguards. This is how people kill themselves because they work in the factory. You know, things like that. You know, and if you go through the history of capitalism in different places, you just see wherever it's common, wherever there was not regulation, just the horrific impact it had on the working class. But let's just abstract that away. I mean, it doesn't matter. It never happened. That's not capitalism. That's, that's something else. That's not conscious capitalism. You, you know, this, the notion that you take this system that induces competition that induces people to do whatever they can to make money because they are coerced to do that for the system and you're just going to inject consciousness into it that doesn't make any sense I mean on, on Peter Joseph's last Z day talk and I should just link to that he gives an example of a guy and he's saying let's say that this is good more ethical person he's running his business and it goes over how this person is going to be forced by the system into making decisions that are not really ethical and you know, and one of the things with conscious capitalism is they have like a whole Whole Foods thing there. Like Whole Foods supports this. Look, Whole Foods is not where we want to go. Like number one, the only reason why Whole Foods, Whole Foods is business for two reasons. Number one, they promote themselves as an alternative to other grocery stores, basically. Like you know, don't go to Shop and Stop, go to Whole Foods. So um, I, let's just make the point that. Whole Foods is a niche market that exists because we have Stop and Shop. 
if you got rid of all the stop and shops and all that, you're not going to have the Whole Foods. Okay, let's get rid of this idea that Whole Foods is working on a sustainability model. You know what Whole Foods is? It's a little health food store that they make really, really big, and then they send lots of junk food there. That's all it is. It's just another supermarket with this facade of being healthy and conscious, and maybe they do a couple of things that's a little bit better for their workers there. But again, their whole system is really predicated on the idea that this is a better alternative to some of these others. It's just a niche market. Um, it, but um, it's still, it's just still this bro infinite, gro infinite growth model thing. And you know, health foods really does is it kicks some small mom and pop health food stores out, out of business. And it sells people junk food that's not healthy at all. And it pretends that it's healthy. And you know, that's what the food industry does because it needs to get people to buy more food than they really should eat. Um, what else could I possibly say about this? You're right, that conscious businesses have trusting, authentic, innovating, and caring cultures that make working there a source of both personal growth and professional fulfillment. Um, you really have to justify this entire system. And, you know, how, to, how true that's going to be is just um, assuming that we're, we're we, is this looking at things from a very narrow perspective, that within certain businesses at certain times they might be able to have a culture which is nice for the people working there, but in no way does that justify even humanity needing to create these business entities to begin with. So you have to go all the way down to ground zero and you have to justify having a capitalistic system given a state of resources and technology. You can't do that if you, if people in your philosophy cannot justify this with reference to the physical world, then shut the fuck up with your conscious capitalism. Because it's, otherwise you're just intellectual masturbation. Now, the, the number one critique that I have of all of integral philosophy is actually not about their philosophy. It's that they take their philosophy and then they just apply it to the world in a way where they just bullshit garbage. Okay, it's like um, they'll philosophize about something that Obama says without realizing that Obama is just an actor who doesn't believe in any of the things that he says. But they'll just philosophize about Obama like Obama is like a real genuine person who's speaking from the heart. And they'll philosophize about, you know, capitalism just assuming, oh, of course, this is the way we have to do things. It's like you don't even, and then they project this idea that the green meme is evil. Oh, there's a mean green meme. Like, like you have to try to um, act like the problem is green and then tell people to align with orange. If you're so integral, and you want to move people up to spiral, if you want to get them to yellow and turquoise, then why do you stomp all over green and promote orange? I mean, what this is, with conscious capitalism, it's all just taking orange and trying to pretty it up. There's nothing integral about it. You know, throughout history, during any major epoch, when technology has really changed human value system, it's changed economic systems. So, um, People have to really understand what transcend and include means. Transcend and include does not mean you add, 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 add on top. Because at certain times, society will create social structures which will then later collapse. Like when we went from feudalism to capitalism, while you can say that our system transcends and includes feudalism, we got rid of you know, the monarchs that, that inherit the titles and the and nobility and that type of the way that classism was structured into that system. Well, we replaced with another structural classism, but the point is that the feudal system basically collapsed and it was replaced by something else. It, we, we didn't transcend and include the divine right of kings. We, you know, that, that would not make any sense. And what, what in that sense you're trying to do is transcend and include every little aspect of capitalism. You're not really thinking about what you're doing. I, I don't want these emails from Integral Philosophy. I, I just kind of watch these what Integral Philosophy is doing from afar. I can't seriously get into it because it's just full of bullshit. I think it's good to read uh, up on understand what Spiral Dynamics is because it's incredibly useful. I think it's great to read Ken Wilber, but it, as soon as you leave the um, philosophy and you go into the real world application with, um, out, with almost without exception, it's just a bunch of garbage. Okay, um, that's it. Bye.